As part of our effort to help build a better Bay Area, we're committed to focusing on the climate and environment. The work of researchers here in the Bay Area is taking on added urgency in wake of a disturbing new report about the damage being done to coral reef habitats. And Spencer Christian is back with more on that threat. Spencer? Yeah, well, Larry and Christian, this report is really setting off alarm bells, as it should. But at the same time, the Bay Area has been an epicenter of research into replenishing and potentially saving coral reefs and the marine life they support. For marine biologist Ali Hernandez, exploring the world's coral reefs with the California Academy of Sciences has been both exhilarating and at times disheartening, especially when she comes across evidence of the damage being blamed on climate change and rising ocean temperatures, an effect known as coral bleaching. And seeing the corals bleaching is just, it's really shocking and, and sad. This is a coral skeleton, it's made of um, calcium carbonate and that's why it's white. She says the white of the dead coral contrasts with colors often visible a few feet beneath the ocean's surface, produced by organisms like algae that attach themselves to coral and thrive in healthy reefs, a symbiotic relationship that's disrupted when waters become too warm. Then that symbiosis, that relationship between the coral and the algae, it's not positive for the coral anymore, um, so the coral release that algae. Sometimes with deadly consequences. A new report sponsored by the United Nations is revealing that some 14% of the world's coral reefs have disappeared in the space of a decade. Among the main drivers, ocean warming and coral bleaching. The coral reef study was one of the largest of its kind, and it may serve as a global warning. Here in the Bay Area, researchers have already been hard at work on new ways to protect our ocean habitats. One concern is rising ocean temperatures and stressed ecosystems disrupting the marine food chain, potentially impacting the fisheries that provide the seafood we eat and the migration of animals that grace our shores. Many, many animals like whales and birds who come and visit marine um, mammals and birds that come to our coasts and rely on our ecosystems here for nesting and for feeding. Rebecca Johnson is also part of a diverse California Academy of Sciences team working on marine solutions. Programs including Thriving California, the Resilient Islands Initiative, and Hope for Reefs, which created this aquarium-based laboratory for coral spawning all with the goal of restoring endangered habitats and supporting biodiversity in oceans around the globe. And so it's changing pretty quickly because of what we've done to the planet. But it's also big, and we can make a difference if we make changes now. Whatever is there, maintain it in the best way. And the need has perhaps never seemed so urgent as they struggle to preserve this key link in our ecosystem. Now, if there is a hopeful note in all of this, it is that the report also pointed out that habitats like reefs can successfully regenerate themselves if they're given enough time and a healthy environment in which to recover. So that's encouraging. Ah, uh, we've seen that, right, Larry? Absolutely. Yeah. And in fact, uh, one you know, of the what? few pluses, benefits of the pandemic is that fewer people have been, like in Hawaii, yeah. in, in the water like Hanama Bay, and you're seeing the fish come back yeah. and the reef come back to life. Yeah. So it can heal itself. Yeah. But yeah. you got to allow it to. All right. Th we special get out thank of the you. way. Thank you. Yeah.